For from the fullness of one's heart, the mouth speaks. I read once that our lips are the conduit for our outward action. Our lips become the conduit of our outward actions. And how true that so often time is. You and I take a journey, or at least we should take a journey every single day of our earthly life, and it's a journey that involves you and I moving from, well, it's less than, for most of us, three feet. And that journey is from one's head to one's heart and back. Think about it. How much distance between your brain and your heart? Not much different, not much distance there at all, is there? Ah. But I think it's by no coincidence that there's this there's this other organ or part of our body that is the intersection between our mind and and our heart. And that part of our body is our mouth, our lips. It sits right smack dab in between. It is the intersection between our heads and our hearts. Now, I don't know about you, but growing up, my dad would always tell me, Stephen, use your head. And my mother would tell me, Stephen, follow your heart. Now, I don't know about you, but oftentimes I found as a child and as a young person growing up that those two things were like fighting one another. They were like in opposition to one another. So what am I supposed to do? Use my head or follow my heart? But I think you would agree with me as well that those two things are not always mutually exclusive, but rather, I believe God gave us both of those, a mind and a heart, so that you and I might find the need and the desire and the ability every day to make the journey to both places, because all of our decisions and all of our beliefs and all of our values should have taken the opportunity to have crossed the threshold of our mind and our heart. Because then, then that intersection between the two, i.e. our mouth, can hopefully then speak words that are, well, that are gospel words, good news words, words that build up, words that encourage, words that acknowledge the goodness of other people, words that are words of promise, of hope, of forgiveness, of life, and of divine love itself. Why Pope Francis has often been known to say that if indeed our actions are grounded in divine love, if indeed our actions are grounded in divine love, then our words will always speak of life. If our actions are always grounded in divine love, that is, charity, then our words will always speak of divine life. So we gather here today, and we're reminded on this final Sunday of Ordinary Time before we enter into the discipline of the 40 days of the Lenten season that is upon us this week. We're made ever mindful in our gospel today that why we all have wooden beams and they're lodged beautifully in our eyes because of course we recognize that we have faults of our own. We have weaknesses of our own and of course we need to be able to take that journey from the mind to the heart and back and forth again so that we might discern what it is then that we need to be able to do the motivation that is required of us to be able to remove the wooden beam from our lives and so the church in a few days will give us a gift and that gift is 
40 days that invites you and I into the disciplines of prayer and fasting and almsgiving. And hopefully, through those disciplines, we will not only be aware of what the wooden beam is and what it looks like, but what we need to be able to do to remove it. And I would contend that oftentimes what we need to do to remove the wooden beam is we need a little bit of time, time to reflect, time to think by using our minds, our heads, and time to go into the deep recesses of our heart. Because in our heart of hearts, the one who dwells there is not our own heart, but it is the heart of God. In the heart of hearts, in the very depths of our being, resides the God of love, resides divine love. And so during the season, upcoming season of Lent, you and I hopefully will take that journey, that journey that invites us to use our heads, to follow our hearts, because in doing both, we will discover the truth. The truth that God's divine love is present and active and at work within us, even in the midst of our wooden beams and our splinters and our weaknesses and our faults. I would contend that actually, hopefully, through prayer and reflection, through time to think and to time to discern the values and the life that is within our heart, why then we will begin to realize that it is actually through those wooden beams and through those faults and weaknesses of our own that we will most discover that God uses those to work in and through us. Because it is when we embrace this life of humility and kindness and compassion that we begin to realize and understand that if we, with our faults and our hang-ups and our problems and our struggles, if we possess that, well then, what should make other people different? And so then hopefully we become, can become a little more understanding of them, a little more patient with them, a little more humble around them, a little more kind and compassionate towards them. And we do it mostly, I believe, the conduit of our outward actions is indeed our lips, our mouth. And we realize how powerful words can be, both in a destructive way, in a harmful way, in an unkind way, as well as in a uplifting way, a encouraging way. And so you and I, as we gather in prayer today, are called upon to reflect upon the words that are given to us by a loving God. And those words, as we study scripture, always remind us that why you can tell a tree by its fruit. You can tell goodness when you see it because, of course, there's goodness. You can tell evil because, of course, it speaks and looks like evil. We don't have to be rocket scientists to be able to figure out what's right and wrong, what's good and bad, what's, what is indeed moral or immoral in our lives. And so then we are invited as we recognize all that is going around us and within us and about us in this world and within our lives, we are invited every day to use our heads, but also to follow our hearts and to recognize that the conduit in between those two realities is the gift of our speech, our mouth, our lips. So let us pray that we might continue as we, with our own lips, receive the real presence of the body and blood of Christ today, that those lips might in turn become the voice and the mouth and the lips of Christ himself as we go out into our homes, into our community, and into our world. That by using our minds and following our hearts, we might not bring judgment and condemnation and harmful words to others, but that we might bring them peace and compassion and life and understanding. That we might bring them Christ.